their newfound celebrity thrust TLC into the spotlight. Soon, Lisa and her bandmates begin brushing elbows with other celebrities around town. TLC and Lisa, they're still at the beginnings, you know, of their career, but she's buzzing in Atlanta. But nobody makes an impact like Atlanta Falcons football star, Andre Rising. She told me that they met in a club, that, <laughs> that he was following her around in a club in Atlanta, and that she had no interest at all in him whatsoever. And then at some point, she just finally was like, oh my God, what is it? And then, you know, they had a drink. From that point on, Andre and Lisa are virtually inseparable. Here's this major entertainer and this major NFL star, but then it was just a boy and a girl, you know, and they just vibed together and they just really clicked. Just weeks into their relationship, Lisa moves in with her new man. But it's not long before the good times are marred by alleged infidelity and betrayal. With the fame and the women and things kind of got out of hand. And then, you know, she told me one time that she actually came home and she knew something was up and she kept asking him, you know, do you have somebody here? Do you have somebody here? And he was like, nah, nah, nah. And, and she actually found a woman in the closet. Andre continues to deny infidelity claims. Still, the heartache and pain push left eye into old habits. I think that she probably used alcohol as a way to cope. But on the surface, Lisa seems to be living a fantasy life. They look very happy, so... You know, you never really knew what was going on with them behind closed doors. But two years into the fiery couple's relationship, their private battles become a public nightmare. You're like, what the hell is happening here? In June of 1994, Lisa Left Eye Lopez is pushed to her breaking point by NFL boyfriend Andre Risen's infidelity. She was feeling like she was not being considered in the relationship. So she decides to hit him where it hurts. She wanted to kind of destroy his favorite thing, which was his sneaker collection. So she threw all the sneakers into a bathtub and burned them. Like his Jordans, all his fancy shoes go up in flames. It's like her set it off moment. But the TLC star's rash decision sparks an unintended disaster. Unfortunately, she burned down his home as well. In the press, you know, the world kind of skewed it to the point where she was doing, you know, all of these negative things to him and, and she really didn't feel like it was fair. The feisty star turns herself in and authorities charge her with felony arson. Left Eye's bail is set at $75,000, which in an unexpected move, her scorned lover willingly pays. But the resolution only leads a bigger issue to light. We then find out she has a drinking problem. Maybe this is why, you know, she acts how she acts. Clearly Left Eye needed some help and all of her people were sort of in damage control after that. Within the week, Lisa Lopez checks into an Atlanta rehab center hoping once and for all to face the demons she's been battling since childhood. She did consider that a wake-up call. Andre did not come around as much to visit her. And I think they just kind of drifted apart at that time. She said her heart was broken. And that is when she just started a new life and started to spread her wings. And she started taking better care of herself and writing more. Just one day after her release, Lisa returns to the studio to record TLC's second album. Lisa made no apologies. She didn't cower, you know, after the whole incident. She was just her. Take her to leave it. And then Crazy Sexy Cool comes out and it just makes perfect sense. Lisa was the crazy one. People always say that Tion has this cool voice. Chili is known as the sexy one. I'm the crazy one. Hey, 
crazy sex cool let's roll with it and obviously it worked because that album was just phenomenal crazy sexy cool is an instant success and produces three number one hits for tlc centerpiece of that project is the song waterfall and when you think about the most important part of that song you think of left eye's opening line I, if that song comes on the radio, I think none of us are changing the channel ever. It's such a great song. And then we all remember the video, of course, with the, at that time, really innovative special effects. She wrote the Waterfall poem in the Diversion Center that ended up being the rhyme in, in Waterfalls. The content of the lyrics themselves, they just resonate with with every age group, race, nationality. They're just they're just profound. The album spends two years at the top of the Billboard charts, eventually going quadruple platinum. It was outstanding for the girls. I mean, everybody was in love with these. They were like America's sweetheart. Despite their commercial success, by July of 1995, the group is in crisis, having amassed over $3 million in debt. They were not told the ins and outs of what happens when you sign a record deal and how everything from the soda that you order in the studio to the limo that you call to go home comes out of your budget. So they filed bankruptcy. You would not imagine that so much success would result in a bankruptcy. Trust me, you can sell 10 million albums and be broke if you have greedy people behind you. And I think that's the first time the public really sees artists like beefing with their record label. Like, we, we are your superstars and we have nothing to show for it. And I think that was the moment, for Left Eye at least, where she realized this music industry is really just a business. And things changed for Left Eye after that. Her vision changed. Her path changed. When the time comes for the girls to renegotiate their contract, Lisa hopes this will bring the change they all need. But nothing could be farther from the truth. I'll never forget it. She had, the contract was, was FedEx to her, and it was like that thick, and there was probably... 70 to 100 signature pages for her to sign. That They wanted it to be turned around by like the next day. And she was like, this is ridiculous. It was a very high pressure situation. Like, why are you taking so long? You don't trust us. She was made out to be the person that was causing trouble by not signing the contract right away. In the end, she ended up just signing it because the other two members of the group had signed it and she didn't want to cause any problems. She was very unhappy about it. She went through the motions, but you know, she wanted to do her own thing and maybe that stemmed from feeling a little bit betrayed. Determined to come out on top, Left Eye throws herself into her work, writing new music. And in 1999, TLC releases their third album, Fan Mail. They're basically starting from point zero again. And then four years later, they show us why they were those superstars, who they are. And we get no scrubs from Fan Mail. If TikTok was around, no scrubs would have been viral the next day. <laughs> no scrubs. I think every woman could relate dealing with men that we just don't want to deal with. And again, it kind of fed into the kind of ironic girl power of their whole vibe. The album earns TLC a place at the top of the Billboard charts and two more Grammys. But despite its success, at the end of the tour, the group decides to go their separate ways. That's when um, they took a little time out. Uh, Tion was dealing with some health things and Chili was taking some time with her child. Lisa was definitely not incredibly interested in continuing with the band. 
she was left out of some songs and some processes for fan mail. She wanted to be solo. She wanted to try new things. You started to understand that it wasn't that Left Eye was crazy. Left Eye was different. Left Eye saw the world differently. She was built differently. She processed music differently. She created hip hop differently. And when you're in a group that is being structured and manufactured for you, and, and you're wired differently, what do you do? You rebel. Lisa goes out on her own and forms her own company, Left Eye Productions, to help other artists gain a seat at the table. She started working with um, artists like Black and in this other group, Egypt. And, and she really was the reason why Black got their record deal. She also continues to make music herself. She took on this moniker, N-I-N-A. New identity, not applicable. And it kind of was her way of wiping the slate clean and looking toward the future as an entirely different person. She was working with the Spice Girls. She worked with NSYNC. She was in Donnell Jones' You Know What's Up. And then she was on the remix uh, to Little Kim's Not Tonight called Ladies' Night. Lisa also starts investing more time in her well-being. Lisa was looking for a more spiritually sound life and separation from the fast-paced world of Hollywood and the music industry. She wanted to cleanse her body. She wanted to do away with the, the alcohol and the beer. She started going to Honduras and she started taking better care of herself. There was no media, there were no fans, there's no television, there's nothing. It's just so peaceful. In April 2002, Lisa makes one last trip to Honduras. She brings her siblings with her, as well as the girls from Egypt. The whole purpose was threefold, actually. It was to want to cleanse, it was to learn to work together as a group, and it was to learn some artist development techniques. Just days before the group is due to come home, on April 25th, they head out for a photo shoot down by the water. Left Eye was operating an SUV along this very tiny road. And she had this camera crew with her documenting it all. This road was very dangerous. So Left Eye was forced off the road while another car was coming at her. And the SUV crashed. One young lady, her leg had been severely injured. There were other injuries, mostly glass and cuts and contusions. But Lisa was the only fatality. She didn't have her seatbelt on. One third of the Grammy winning trio TLC was killed last night in a car accident. This is so hard because it's such a reality check because it's only two of us up here. I think we all wanted to see a happy ending for TLC. The three girls coming together as grown women, uh, creating new music. Unfortunately, that didn't happen with the car crash and Lisa's death. <laughs> 